We'd like to welcome a new type of guy to the collection of this year's Weird Guy Portfolio. So far this year, we've got tunnel guys. We've got guys getting stuck inside of decorative urns. You got naked guys terrorizing local bass pro shops near you. And guys who want to have relations with a commemorative popcorn bucket. And probably a few other specific types of guys that we are currently forgetting. Well, now you can add insufferable early tech adopter guys to the list because they are back, baby, and in a very big way. <sighs> it's been a little while since a new tech device has convinced the tech bros to make fools of themselves in public. And we used to have Google glass holes, hoverboard freaks, and all those types shamelessly inhabiting all of our public spaces. Well, thanks to Apple's new Vision Pro virtual and augmented reality headset, the tech bros are back and they are ready to be bullied because they're strapping these things on and intentionally acting like douchebags in public. So we're obviously aware that a majority of these videos, they are done intentionally to make the goggles and those wearing them look stupid and annoying. A little bit of self-deprecating humor, if you will. Anything for views. But some of them, like... Casey Neistat's video seems to walk the line of silliness to just being a straight up like undisclosed advertisement. Yeah. All of the videos feature activities that should not be attempted while actually wearing the goggles themselves. In fact, Apple clearly states that anyone using the Vision Pro headset should never do so while operating a moving vehicle, bicycle, heavy machinery, or in any other situations requiring attention to safety. Yet all weekend long, social media was inundated with video after video of people who presumably spent $3,500 to make themselves look like total fucking assholes. <laughs> God! Walking around in public while pretending to multitask, riding public transit while working in a virtual office, and in a few cases, driving their, of course, Teslas yeah, of course. while wearing the headset and appearing as though their attention is elsewhere. The crossover of Tesla driver and Apple Vision Pro headset wearer is a full circle, especially the Cybertruck, which someone was spotted in one. The, and these are all like, these are definitely done for the camera. The thing apparently doesn't even work if you're like moving fast. Well, it, okay, so apparently it works. I, I'm confused about it because apparently it does work if you're moving, like on a train or something like that or, okay. or a plane. But it senses walking? Yeah, but apparently senses walking. Mm. Although I've seen some people use it in a demo as like a screen showing you on Apple Maps where to go. Yeah. Which is just like, okay, just pull out your phone. You look ridiculous. Yeah, but, walking but, around in fucking ski goggles. Yeah, regardless, it, they're uh, not doing a service to themselves nor the goggles by making these videos. It's, it's actually, it's, the, it's glass holes all over again. And over, arguably over worse. a decade later. And yes, way worse. Yeah. Again, we're going to give these people the benefit of the doubt and assume that all of these videos are done intentionally with two goals. One being to maximize viewership of the very annoying videos and get shareability through outrage. And I think this is the main reason. Number two, so that they can legally write off these stupid headsets on their taxes because they use them as a prop in their video production. Yeah. Also to brag that they have $35 to spend on a product. $3,500. $3,500, sorry. $3,500 to spend on a product that at this point isn't particularly useful. No. It's more of just a flex. Yes. So a few of the more tame videos are just kind of boring and seem to excite the user by adding more multitasking to their lives, which is something we're not exactly sure should be what we're aspiring to do. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, I guess it's cool to have 50 screens mapped out around your apartment and an extra timer in your field of view when you're cooking. But does this actually solve a problem? Or does it open up the user to once again just shorten the rope tied directly to their boss and further dissolve whatever remains of the work-life balance. We're not saying this tech yeah. isn't cool. It's just that so far it just seems like a way to supercharge productivity in a way that might not be healthy in the long run. Also, Apple doesn't even let you jack off in this thing, which is that deal breaker. Come on, you can't even jack off in the, the douchebag headset? What, what is this even fucking what's the for? Point? But yeah, I mean, this is like, it's similar to the Mac Pro where people are like, why would you spend that much money? Who needs this? And it's like, it, the Apple Vision Pro, I think a year from now, will have very cool use cases in uh, design fields, engineering, uh, all that kind of thing. I mean, the VR industry has been like 
trying to make that happen for a long time, but I feel like this product could really do it. Yeah. Your average person, this is just so pointless. Over the top? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Why do you have this? Yes. It's the college student doing uh, reports using Word on a $3,000 MacBook Pro. Yeah. Or, yeah, it, it's it's a bit much. And they don't even let you jack off. They don't even let you jack off. Now, you'd assume that a product this immersive and this expensive would let you tur turn your apartment into the ultimate goon cave. But you would be mistaken because Apple got ahead of everyone. They knew this was coming, no pun intended. And they basically blocked the ability to turn your bedroom into a virtual sex dungeon. Or to even access your vast library of VR porn -a uh, With some users on Reddit referring to the Vision Pro headset as a, quote, $3,500 chastity belt. No, these were supposed to be my Gooner goggles. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> That's a great name for them. My Gooner goggles. Yeah, the Jack and Joggers. I got yeah. my Jack and Joggers <laughs> yeah. on. I got my Gooner goggles. I'm living in the year 3000 over here with my Gooner <laughs> goggles and my Jack and Joggers. Yeah. Uh, users on a recently created subreddit targeted directly at people who bought the Vision Pro to enhance their otherwise normal viewing habits, they're equally upset, with some users keeping track of site compatibility and having to report that, unfortunately it doesn't appear that any adult content in its current form on popular websites can be viewed in 180 degree 3D SBS. Too bad. My immersion! Yeah. <laughs> no! Apparently you can still watch it like flat. Yeah. But what's the point? Well, I mean, like, I think your average gooner, uh, you can have like, what, up to nine virtual screens going yeah. at the same time? And that's nine tabs of Pornhub you can have playing simultaneously. That, uh, you know, to do that otherwise, you'd have to have so many monitors, you'd have to, this solves that. Yeah. And I, no one can see what you're looking at. Unfortunately, in going through a lot of the videos and articles about this, I did happen upon a Vice article that actually interviewed a professional gooner who, I, I, I didn't know what the video was going to be before I clicked on it, but... Uh, this video is essentially Jordan Peterson's nightmare. This guy is literally oh, no! living in a goon cave. No, what are you doing? He's got screens Stop it. all over the place, and he's... I mean, I, I don't want to get too gross, The but government should give this man a free girlfriend! He's he's gooning a piece of rubber. With multiple screens at, going yeah, on yeah. at once. Yeah, yeah, he's in the fucking goon matrix. Yeah. It's, yeah that's it's, the way to do it. It's wild. But now, but you, you but can you do that anywhere. You can take the goon cave with you. No, take it on the Apple subway. says no way. No, you just pull up Pornhub on the tabs. Yeah, but it's not going to be immersive. I mean, I'd say it's pretty immersive. <laughs> Better than real life, I say. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we don't doubt for a second that someone will eventually figure out an easy way to provide everyone with immersive adult entertainment inside Apple's new headset. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to jailbreak two the things. The jailbreak community is working overtime. You're to gonna solve have to this. jailbreak the headset, and then you're gonna have to break yourself out of jail when you're gooning on the subway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, until then, there seems to be just one surefire workaround getting traction on one of Reddit's popular VR forums. Uh, there's a hack for playing VR files if you have an AVP. It involves restoring it to default factory settings, boxing it up, selling it on eBay, buying a Quest 3, and pocketing the $3,000 difference. So let us know if that works. <laughs> That's a good tip. Hey, Mark Zuckerberg here. The goon cave you needed was here all along. We let your goon to your heart's content. Anyway, all jokes aside, it's kind of crazy that the Vision Pro is getting so much hype considering that the most recent version of the Oculus Quest, it, it features almost the same visual pass-through technology. Then again, it's an Apple product, this new one is, so it's inherently seen as premium. But the Quest 3, like, people are talking about like, oh, the Apple, you can see through it and see your surroundings. And it's like, well, okay, yes, the f like, you can literally see through it. It has like a screen built into it like, like that, but the Quest 3... Yeah, it has, has the cameras. pass through. There was someone uh, doing a video. They were skating the Venice Beach skate park while wearing a Quest Three and doing Why? completely fine. I don't know. P <laughs> people are out testing these things in very God strange damn ways. It. It's so obnoxious. But but yes, uh, as far as the technology goes, like the Quest is there and has kind of the built-in yeah. ecosystem already. I'm, n I'm not interested in either. No, of neither products. am I. I <laughs> I think VR is fucking cool as hell. But every time I've used it, I've gone, wow, that was really cool. I have absolutely no interest in doing that again for a very long time. Yeah, the only VR that appeals to me is, uh, you know, the actual, like, Valve shit, and that stuff is very expensive, and yeah. I, you know, as cool as it would be, I definitely would never use well, it enough to justify the expense. Even that, I feel like I would play that Half-Life game and be like, that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, this, time for this thing to gather dust once again. Yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, with the, the Apple uh, Gooner goggles, you, you can FaceTime people with your very own uh, Uncanny Valley avatar. So there's a perk? Uh, you, you have, if you've ever wondered what you would look like if you had been kidnapped as a child and the FBI had to, like, you know, estimate what you would look like at your current age. Yeah. Uh, the, this, the Apple solves that because yeah. everyone looks like a fucking force ghost. It's like it, they, people compare it to Ready Player One and it's like, okay, yes, if you were one of like the uh, background characters behind Beetlejuice that yeah. the artist didn't really put a lot uh -huh. of time into. It's like, yeah, we got the approximation. You know what it looks like? It looks like when you would scan your face into NBA. Or like, I think it's better than that. <laughs> We saw because it moves around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it might look kind of passable when you're inside the headset itself, but it looks very unsettling to literally everyone else. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the price on these headsets will eventually even out, and the technology will evolve. But we're still not sure that it'll have mass appeal because even the most impressive VR headsets lose their cool factor pretty quickly, and this one quicker than I, even I could have imagined. Mm -hmm. That is, this is a the douchebag. The douchebag headset. Like, I, I I will assume that I will see people in first class doing work on these things. Doing work. Gooning. They're <laughs> gooning in first class. I would assume, I, I will assume for my own sanity they're that they're edging. in there doing work. But again, it's like, why, why are we doing, why are we progressing towards less of a work-life balance? Why aren't we uh, immediately trying to stop that? Because right, which, like, again... Yeah, having this like perceived as something for like office workers instead of something for people who work in three-dimensional design is very strange to me because yeah. that's where it actually has the most potential as for actually improving their lives. Yes. Whereas like But also <laughs> they're just like, yeah, you can uh, answer emails. Yeah. And anywhere. take phone calls. <laughs> it's, oh, an, cool. it's an iPad on your face. Yeah. The the problem is is as we've all seen in corporate America, this will solve the the problem. This will solve the problem of uh, productivity at work from home. Except that no companies actually want that. We've already seen that productivity went up when people were able to work from home yeah. and had more time for themselves and had a, a happier life. And they still brought everyone back to the office. And if this actually improves productivity in people's homes, people, the companies are still going to make them come and sit in their fucking cubicle and put their damn goggles on. Yeah. It's just, that's what's going to happen. Except now you're going to have to work while your Tesla's driving itself on the way home. Yeah. So go to your doctor and get yourself a medical exception right now. Yeah. Blind yourself. Yeah. Go to go to your optometrist. You're like, no, they can't do it. Sorry. I need the thickest glasses yeah. you've got. Uh, anyway, yeah. It's just, it's, it, what it comes down to, it's just not fun or comfortable having something on your face for an extended period of time. Yeah. That's kind of the, the big hang up. And that's the bottom line, because I said so. <laughs> But while we're on the topic of people making absolute fools of themselves on social media, we should probably talk about the guy who basically admitted that he is such a square that even the slightest bit of CBD, not even THC, allegedly knocked him out so hard that he slept for, wow, 11 whole hours. Unthinkable. And that caused him to miss church. Oh! Which obviously means he's going to go to hell now. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Them's the rules. Not only did he drink from the devil's cauldron, he also skipped his one chance to absolve himself of those sins. Well, depending on which branch of Christianity he is, that might not be a problem. <laughs> well, in actuality, he's just telling on himself because he posted a photo of a drink that doesn't even contain the psychoactive part of cannabis and said that it completely destroyed him and that cannabis is ruining society. So please enjoy this tweet from a paid blue check guy who claims to be a professor and a, here's, here's the giveaway. A Catholic accelerationist. Oh, yeah, he's going to have to get to confession. Sorry, buddy. That's post-haste. Uh, here's the tweet. Above a photo of a peach ginger sparkling beverage that, again, contains 0% THC, the user wrote, Cannabis is a silent epidemic wreaking havoc on the American family. A friend brought some of these over, and I drank two around 8 p.m. My body completely shut down, and I slept from 9 p.m. until 10 a.m. I slept through Sunday Mass. How is this legal with such innocent packaging? And of course, community notes were added to the post, indicating that lab testing on the product confirmed no traces of the psychoactive part of the cannabis plant and only 10 to 11 milligrams of CBD per can, which means that this Poindexter is either the weakest person on the planet 
or they're trying to start some crusade against even the most harmless products that contain any ingredients stemming from the cannabis plant. Mm -hmm. It's like rallying against something made of hemp for the same reasons. Like, it's like he wore something made of hemp and then immediately passed out from exposure to, oh. the, to the drugs. Oh. Oh. If anything, he's, uh, he's actually made that product more sought after, which is not going to make God very happy. Yeah, he's committed an even bigger sin. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I, he's promoted cannabis. Uh, yeah. But, hey, speaking of psychoactive substances, uh, these ones might have worked a little too well because over the weekend, Canadian hero and pop vocal superstar Michael Bublé... Mikey Bubbles. ...decided to enhance his Stanley Cup All-Star Weekend experience by doing a little microdosing. Um, there was just one problem. It appears as though the king of Christmas crooning accidentally macrodosed instead of microdosed. Oops. Mixed those up. Uh, he apparently took some, uh, some mushroom-type substance from a friend and hit the ice. And then the press booth for one of the most entertaining interviews we've seen in a while. I mean, the dude is... He might still be tripping, but at the very least, he is basking in the afterglow of a tremendously positive experience because he is in love with everything and everyone around him. Yeah, I'd say he took the exact right yes. amount. Not enough to freak out, just enough to feel good. Uh, yeah, I mean, diff the definition of microdosing is not exactly clear. For some people, it's like, yeah, you don't feel it at all. It's just, That's the point. It's just yeah. there. Like, like with CBD, you're not supposed to feel it. You're supposed uh, to get the benefits without the... Yeah, I, in my opinion, the best way to do mushrooms is just do the, the bare minimum to like actually feel it. And it seems like he probably did that. The right amount. Maybe, maybe a little bit more than that, but that's the right amount. He's not, like, freaking out. He's he's doing this interview, and he's, like, he's coherent. He's lucid as hell. Yeah. He's a little slurry, he's not, but, uh, you know. Yeah, so yeah. good for him. I didn't know you liked to get wet, Michael Bublé. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bublé slash Bubbly is now my favorite Canadian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a cool guy. Yeah. So, yeah, he starts off answering a question about the fantasy hockey leagues that he's in, talking about how he, his picks have been stacking up. And then he admits that he's kind of tripping. We will attempt to show the video and we'll leave it in if they if they hit us with a copyright notice where they take our monetization instead of just taking down the video yeah, since I mean. this video is sponsored. And we can make that sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if it gets struck with a takedown notice or something, you won't see a video, then you'll just hear us talking about it instead. But we'll leave a link in the description below like we always do. Yeah. Because you have to see this video one way or another. It's a, it's a total joy to watch because it's like... Canadian royalty, tripping balls publicly, but in a very positive way. Yeah. And luckily, it seems as though people haven't been too critical about it. Anyways, here's either the video supercut or our retelling of it, which won't do it justice. Find the video. The answer is no. I will not be the oldest draft pick the Vancouver Canucks have ever taken at 48 years old. I know you and you. You're a really good hockey player. You got good hands, dude. You've got silky mitts, my brother. You are the first person who's ever told me that. Because I'm the first real ever hockey fan. Dude. My buddy told me this is just a microdose of mushrooms, and he was lying. <laughs> so I'll be honest, I thought I was in Blades of Glory for most of the time that I was out there until it sort of settled down, and then I realized, holy I am at the NHL All-Star Game. It's we tough. literally are the heart and soul of these teams. And uh, if they win, it'll be because of us. And if they lose, it will be because of us. All of my, my text, it was people, congratulations, congratulations on being chosen to go to the All-Star Game. And I was like, congratulations, I'm a, I'm a superstar. <laughs> Thanks, guys, thank you. I'm a superstar. I'm em Michael Buble. Embrace it. You are. You should enjoy it a little yeah. bit, Michael Buble. Yeah. Uh, also, sitting right next to him, which wasn't in the supercut, because he doesn't really add anything to it. I, I just wanted to hear Michael Bublé talk, but Will Arnett is sitting directly next to him. Oh, I wonder if he gave him the shrooms. I wonder if that's the friend. Who knows? Uh, he does mention, he's like, he talks about Michael Bublé, like, he's like, you've done so much work to get every woman on earth to love you so much, and you just lost all of that love and admiration by talking about fantasy hockey leagues. He's like, also, I'm pretty sure you lost all of your sponsors by doing mushrooms on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, he's good. Yeah, but uh, apparently he later claimed it was all a joke, because that's what you gotta say. But uh, we're telling you from first-hand experience, when you see the video, it really appears as though he is still coming down from a wonderful experience. Um, anyways, that is basically two drug stories back-to-back -back in a video we might get hit for, so we better take some time to thank today's sponsor. Thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's episode and helping teach us how to make delicious meals that look great, too. 
With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. No more staring blankly in the fridge wondering what to make for dinner. Give HelloFresh a try and dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from each week. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. HelloFresh also owns Green Chef, another one of our sponsors, and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there is something for everyone. We're big fans of getting food on the plate as quickly as possible, and some of the 20-minute recipes on next week's menu that we're excited to try are the one-pot Mexicali black bean soup with The Works and the chicken sausage rigatoni rosa with cream cheese, zucchini, and parmesan. Mmm! Go to HelloFresh.com slash TodayDailyFree and use our code TodayDailyFree for free breakfast for life. Free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That is free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash TodayDailyFree with our code TodayDailyFree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, back to the news. And just what in the hell is Tucker Carlson doing in Russia? Hmm, suspicious. I mean, if there's one person who we would actually, like, just totally expect to be in Russia with zero consequences right now, it'd probably be Tucker Carlson, yeah. considering how much he has pandered to Vladimir Putin both on and now off of Fox News. Mm -hmm. Tucker had been whitewashing a lot of the more nefarious actions from Putin while still on Fox, which was bizarre even by Fox News standards. Yeah. But without them weighing him down, now he's free to go full mask off as a fully funded Russian asset, I guess, which <laughs> if Trump gets reelected, that might actually work out for him. Yeah. It's a hell of a gamble, one that we're not sure would pay out for him with his base, regardless of how much Trump calls Putin a smart guy. I just can't imagine even Tucker fans being like, yes, this is exactly, this aligns with my beliefs. Yeah. Vladimir Putin is a great guy who's done nothing wrong. Like, I it's feel so like even among right-wingers, before the war, they were like, oh, Russia's like so tough, like they don't have like pronouns in their army, like they're, they haven't gone woke. And then they went to war, and, uh, I mean, at this point, it's basically a stalemate, but it hasn't gone great for them. No. Like, they, uh, they, they not so good, so they, they can't really fall back on, like, them being a powerful, dangerous country. Also, I know it's not accurate at all, uh, but in their viewpoint, kind of weird to stan a communist leader. Putin? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, not they, they, but Russia, considered by many chuds to be a communist nation. Yeah, that is funny. It has been, like, what, 36 years? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, it's honestly just really fucking odd that Ta Carlson seems to be so obsessed with helping Putin's image, especially since Carlson himself is wealthier than 99% of the population. I mean, he does come from the Swanson TV dinner fortune, after all. Yeah. That is a big fortune. Uh, never Which is funny, because... Uh, I thought he was the everyman. Well, like, you could, I, if I was a real crank, I could make the argument that uh, the invention of TV dinners, that was when the American family that we see in all those Norman Rockwell paintings sitting around yeah. the dinner table praying uh, together, uh, that's when that started falling apart because all of a sudden you could go to the supermarket frozen aisle and now we're all eating dinner watching fucking Jeopardy, yeah. not praying to the Lord, not this talking is all to each other. Tucker Carlson's fault. And, uh, you know, he wouldn't even have been on any of those news programs if uh, he had gotten his initial wish, which is he wanted to join the CIA. So there's your guy. I feel like he's too weird even for that. <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, Tucker Carlson has continued to downplay most of uh, Putin's actions. And while the visit to Russia so far hasn't resulted in a sit down interview with Putin, plenty of people think that that's one of the reasons that he's there. And at this point, I don't think any of us would be surprised if this happened. Is Putin even, like, alive? I mean, I'd be interested in this just to see how he's looking, because there have been rumors for yeah. a while now that he's not doing great. And, look, it would be hard for even Putin to follow up someone as prolific as professional poster Cat Turd 2. What a, what a, a, a case of whiplash I would have, going yeah. from uh, the most famous person in the world, Cat Turd 2, to the other most famous person in the world, Vladimir Putin. Yeah, Tucker, what the hell? 
What a one-two punch. What a punch. dip. Uh, here's more on this bizarre little vacation from the New York Times. Tucker Carlson, the former Fox News host who now has a show on the social network X, has been spotted in Moscow in recent days, leading to speculation in Russia and the United States that he is about to achieve his long-stated goal of interviewing President Vladimir V. Putin. Mr. Putin's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, has indicated that Mr. Putin was denying requests from Western news outlets because their countries had been stupefied by anti-Russian propaganda. But Mr. Carlson has been a defender of Mr. Putin while attacking his Western critics, placing him at the vanguard of a pro-Putin wing of the American conservative movement. On television and online, Russian state media has treated Mr. Carlson as a visiting celebrity, offering a stream of photos and videos of his various stops, arriving at the airport, dining at a restaurant, taking in the Spartacus Ballet at the Bolshoi Theater. In one video in wide circulation, including on X, Mr. Tucker, Mr. Tucker, Mr. Tucker told a self-professed fan that he was there because I wanted to talk to people and look around and see how it was doing, and it's doing very well. Asked about a possible interview with Mr. Putin, Mr. Carlson shrugged and said, we'll see. News of his arrival in Russia received a decidedly warm reaction in Moscow. In a report about local reaction to his visit, a woman tells an interviewer on the Russian state outlet Sputnik, he is the bravest and most courageous American journalist today. So folks, we are living in a, the most absurd possible timeline. Also, okay. uh, it appears as though Russia might still be uh, doing some dirty work on uh, X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. Did you see the Texas post this week where they're like, yeah, Texas we, should secede. We have a warm water port. Yeah, that was that was pretty strange. That is yeah. not something any American would ever say. And if you click on that profile and just, just keep on scrolling, it is yeah. literally the same type of uh, meme style crap produced that was being shared on like the, the Black Lives Matter and yeah, yeah, the yeah. anti-Black Lives Matter websites that were like caught doing this. Yeah, I mean, all that 2016 Russian shit, the, stuff, the stuff that was real was like, it was targeted at the dumbest people online, yeah. which is everyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this is similar. But yeah. <laughs> they do have that warm water port. Texas has a good, it's got a warm water port. It won't freeze over in the winter like so many of other, uh, America's other ports. <laughs> yeah, you would only say that if you were from Russia where like, you, all of your ports do <laughs> fucking freeze over. And that's why, that's literally why they took Crimea is mm -hmm. because uh, the Crimea doesn't freeze in the winter. Well, back here in these United States, other mind-numbingly stupid events continue to occur, like that God's Army caravan, Woo! which seemed absolutely rudderless this past weekend while it continued to devolve into a shouting match between its own members after they were faced with the reality that not only was this thing just a giant grift, but members of this convoy who journeyed to the Texas-Mexico border were apparently distraught to find out that the border crisis was completely overblown by conservative media outlets. It's not what I expected, but then again, I don't know what I expected. Um, I can tell you it's not as bad as what I thought. So that that's kind of eye-opening in itself too, yeah. Yeah, they were, they were all expecting to get down there and have it look like World War Z. Yes, yeah, where they're trying to <laughs> climb over the yeah. wall and like the zombies are. Where, where, where is everyone? Where are they at? Huh, well, I guess we should just fight ourselves. Yeah. And while we're here, we should do some baptisms. Let's accuse good? each other of being feds and give each other some baptisms in some horse troughs. Yes. And then uh, uh, the, those people that stand outside of Comic-Con with yeah. the heaven or hell signs, mm -hmm. they w were being attacked by the God's Army people. It was It's a what? strange scene. The, and none of it makes sense. Oh. Watch what I So yeah, their journey ended with nothing more than infighting and on-site baptisms. Dunk. Also, residents of Eagle Pass, Texas, they were quoted saying that they have never felt unsafe until the God's Army showed up. So there you go. I mean... Did we learn any lessons here? No. No, no, no we, we didn't. learned nothing. That's the American way. But meanwhile, uh, the bill that included nearly everything that Republicans asked for in regards to the border and funding for Ukraine and Israel yeah. <laughs> uh, appears to be doomed to fail because they don't want to take away one of the main talking points that Donald Trump is running on. And at this point, they're not even hiding the fact that they are killing the bill in order to please Trump and a number of politicians have openly admitted it in interviews 
and on cable news. Do you worry, Congressman, about possible backlash? So if voters think the GOP is willing to let the border, the border crisis burn for nine months in case Trump is reelected? Look, the only way we're going to fix the border is to have a new president. I mean, that's the only way. I mean, Republicans want to secure the border. This is the top priority. I said in conference that I would not only vote for, I would promote a bill that funds Ukraine to help the Ukrainian people, but also secures the border. But I'm not gonna vote for a bill that is gonna hamstring a future president by setting limits, thresholds, before the president can actually do what the president already has authority to do, so. Mr. Speaker, are you gonna be able to stop this bill? We're gonna do everything within our power. I, when I say it's dead on arrival, I mean dead on arrival. And you have Republicans itching to sign off on this in the Senate. I mean, well, it's hard to believe because I think it probably would mean the end of their career. This is a, a, a Democrat trap. It's a trap for Republicans that would be so stupid, so foolish to sign a bill like this. This bill can't be signed. Yeah, they literally got uh, to the discredit of yeah. the Democrats. They, they just bent over and gave the Republicans I, everything they wanted. Yeah, like I... A lot of people are, like, giving them credit here, and I don't know. I mean... There's no winners in this. The most obvious explanation is that the Democrats just like bent over backwards to give it Republicans everything they wanted. Uh, though the craftier explanation is that they knew Republicans would veto this, and this way they get to say, well, Joe Biden tried to give him everything they wanted, but uh, you know, they said no. So now it's on them. I don't know if any of this is gonna fucking matter. It was yeah. just all a real stupid little fucking saga. At the very least, it's it. I, uh, they admit it. I mean, that they yeah. are ho not putting this through because they don't want to hurt Trump's chances. The entire border crisis is a manufactured yeah. thing that well, they, even, <laughs> they don't want to actually improve. Well, yes, this, this bill though, uh, got like the, uh, enthusiastic support of the border patrols union and still they're like, nah, nah, I don't think so. Well, cause the border patrol is woke. That's right. We need to send the Nas Texas National Guard down to the border. The whole thing's such a fucking performative mess, it's insane. Yeah. But look, let's end the episode with a, with a fun one, because unfortunately for all the soccer or football fans out there, the European mind will actually finally be forced to comprehend American cities. <sighs> our lack of walkability, our high pedestrian mortality rate, and the fact that it's literally illegal to walk to some of the stadiums that the World Cup games are being held at. Most notably, the World Cup final which will officially take place at MetLife Stadium in beautiful New da, York. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Concrete jungle where dreams... They got those new uh, yeah. trash... Uh, yeah. You trash smell trucks that? just in time. Not garbage. Beautiful New York City. I mean... Uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Well, hey, you close know, enough. You can see... The skyline. The, the Freedom Tower on a good day, so... It's right there. Yeah. So, oh boy, the eyes of the world will finally be upon New Jersey. Can't wait for all the Italian soccer fans from Italy to come yeah. sample they get to be what the birth, we got going the, on. The birthright over here. Yeah. And all the Italian families in Jersey, they're going to be so happy to see them. Yeah. It's the opposite of the, the reception that they get over there. But the Italians, be interesting. they're just going to use them for a place to stay, let's be honest. Yeah. These meatballs taste like ass. Anyways, uh, so what will New Jersey have to offer a massive amount of visitors from countries where easily accessible public transportation and walkable cities are the norm? Nothing. Nothing. Fucking nothing. You can't even pump your own gas. Like, this is especially wild because, like, there's got to be another stadium in the, like, Hoboken, Newark area that is more accessible than Not this big enough for the World Cup final. I guess. Like, Not even like the, the Yankee or Mets stadiums or, right. or the Brooklyn uh, Nets stadium would be Yeah, better. like New York and Chicago have urban stadiums. San Francisco does too, but I, I don't know if you can San fit San Francisco, a, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can fit a soccer field on there. The, the best one would actually be San Diego's Petco Park. But it's again, I don't know it's if you can fit It's too small for the World Cup. Ah, that's too bad because that one is like... That's like the one stadium where like, holy shit, you're just walking around the city and like, there well, it is. Uh, uh, the I haven't been to Yankee Stadium. Would love to go someday. The Mets Stadium has public transit goes straight to yeah. it. You get off at a stop there. Uh, San Francisco, Levi Stadium is not technically in San Francisco, but I've, it is, I think, partly accessible. Are they, uh, uh, where are they playing in LA? SoFi, which has its own problems. Uh, yeah, no, what, what? I mean, I get it. It's just like, 
Bank of California actually is uh, you're transit under, accessible, but it only seats like 15,000 people. 20,000, but you're underestimating the size of World Cup crowds. Yeah, We're talking yeah. about like a place needs to hold like 70,000 uh, people. I guess. Yeah. It's just such, it's also like doing this in the United States, the last time was like 94, I think. And it's like no one in their right mind is is going like jumping. You're going to like one city. And that's it. Yeah, the one advantage, and we'll get to it, that LA has is that we are already in preparation for the Olympics. So Metro is being built and extended around the city, including the- I don't even think it goes through Inglewood, though. It go, it drops you off like a mile I mean, and a half, two miles. I mean, there's the expo line. But yeah, yeah, they're building it just... to make it work, but not it, it currently is not. Fucking hell. Anyway. But yeah, so what are they getting when they come to New Jersey, all they're, these soccer They're getting fans? a stadium that where it is- Illegal to walk to or from any of the nearby hotels to get there. It's you can see it. It's right there. There's the stadium. Can't walk. No, sir. You must get into a vehicle. They even have, as people posted, they have signs that say you cannot do that. Yeah. Because it they is had a, a crime. Uh, the, the biggest problem recently was the Beyonce concert yeah. there, and they had to put up a sign that was like, "Hey, Bay Hive, no it, walking on our streets." Yeah. So if you look on this Google, uh, look at it on Google Maps, it's insane. This is a stadium that is surrounded by just acres upon acres of asphalt, whose only use is for parking a single level of automobiles. Just a flat uh, surface of and, like, thousands of looks cars. Looks like, uh, like at least three different highways all converging around it. And highways and parkways. They love their parkways out there in New Jersey. They got so many jug handle turns. You guys are going to be so excited to see it. Yeah. Uh, it's a stadium that you will have to fly into Newark to visit conveniently. What an airport, folks. Yeah. Uh, just a, a national embarrassment. What are we doing? Yeah. At least LA's SoFi Stadium is in the midst of some transportation overhaul and it's close to the airports. It's still an embarrassment that consistent public transportation does not currently service our football stadium. Uh, and, and, and your reward for that is you had to pay $85 to park your car there. Uh, I, I went to a preseason game and it was over a hundred. We had to all chip in in the Fuck. car. Fuck. Yeah. Um, there is a train stop a couple miles away, but yeah, then you gotta, you gotta transfer to a bus and then you gotta walk. It's comical how bad this country is at public transit outside of Chicago and New York and LA before the like 50s. <laughs> we had a good thing going, Ruined. but uh, they just sort of let it uh, stagnate and then they were like, well, this sucks. Why does it suck? Because you didn't fund it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, our shortcomings are going to be on full display in 2026 when the eyes of the world will be on East Rutherford, New Jersey. Yep. Can't wait. Anyways, the other cities and stadiums that will be hosting World Cup games here in the States that year are as follows. Please let us know in the comments below how difficult it is to get to these stadiums unless, or even if, you take a car. We need some local input here. Is Memorial Coliseum not big enough? You know, it probably is, but they probably want the big flashy new stadium. Yeah, definitely, it holds more than SoFi. Yeah, it was built for the Olympics. Yeah. And they're gonna use it in the Olympics again. And it has been hey. updated. Yeah. I, anyways, that's, they wanna show off the new shiny thing. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, anyways, here's here's a list of stadiums. You tell us if uh, how bad this is going to be. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, Gillette Stadium in Boston, Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Levi Stadium in sort of San Francisco, Lincoln Field in Philly, Lumen Field in Seattle, Mercedes-Benz Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas, and SoFi here in LA. Look, I I love it. I can't wait for the United States to be the butt of everyone's jokes. It, there was like a post, it was, uh, probably a couple months ago or something, where like earnestly, this was an earnest reply on Twitter, where someone posted like a European soccer stadium, and they're like, I don't understand, where does everyone park? Yeah, you don't. No, you take the fucking train. Yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, oh my God, I, I got so depressed today, I like just randomly, you know, bored. Just googling random things on the computer. As you do. I looked at the, uh, I looked at the metro system in Tehran, Iran, mm. and it is so much better than what we have here in Los Angeles. It was getting me so fucking angry. I was told that all Tehran, those, all those countries hate us for our freedom. <laughs> I guess the yeah the freedom to fucking drive <laughs> everywhere. Yes, even on days like today, where in LA it is absolutely fucking treacherous to be on the roads. Yeah. yeah. We're getting. Uh, we got. An entire year's worth like, of rain like in one day. 12 inches of rain total in the past week. Uh, it's it, fucked it, up. We set the single day rain record uh, that hasn't been broken for like 65 years. 
Good things are happening here, folks. And our infrastructure is certainly able to bear the brunt. I mean, surprisingly, I, I mean, it's, have, thank, it's done okay. People make fun of that river, but it's there for a, re a reason. I am finding some new leaks in my house. Yeah. Well, at least your house there. isn't completely falling down a hill like uh, a couple of others have. Yeah. Anyways, like the video. Thank you for engaging with our content. Make sure you like the video. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. Tell us about your local stadium and how aggravating it is to go to a sporting event or concert there. And uh, while you're here, why don't you watch our other videos? Speaking of sporting events, we have the Steroid Olympics coming up, baby. Yeah. They better that, invent some new public transit for that. You won't need public transit because you'll be you'll running be, the no, whole way there. It's going to be no problem. Yeah. Uh, check out those videos, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.